In the headlines, Council of Ministers declares a state of emergency in the state following TPLF attack on defense forces based in Tigray. And uh, the knife edge, uh, United States vote hangs on a few key states. Hello and welcome to Addis News Hour. I'm Daniel Kasahun with the news. The Ethiopian military is forced to take arms against traitors that are hell bent on killing troops, looting armaments, and damaging the military camps in Tigray. In a breaking televised news, Prime Minister Rabi Ahmed said Ethiopian traitors have wounded the country. Take a look. The National Defense Force that has over the past 20 years protected the nation, paying ultimate sacrifice in many thousands for the sake of nation's compatriots in the country, suffering wounds, bleeding and tiredness has been attacked in many areas by betraying forces and elements organized for the very ill purpose, beginning from Makali. Commander-in-Chief of the Ethiopian Defense Force, Prime Minister Rabi Hamer indicated, what makes the attack the most disgraceful one in the country is that it is committed by Ethiopians against the backs of own national defense force deployed in different parts of the country to ensure peace and security. This force of destruction has been committing heinous acts for the past many months. It is known that it has been committing the most atrocious crimes against civilians, especially via different forces it has trained, armed, and deployed. This attack was carried out by the forces they trained and prepared and assigned in advance. Therefore, it is highly likely that similar attacks might take place in different areas in town. The main objective behind is uh, to divert the attention of the defense force via the evil scheme they have uh, hatched, making it busy protecting civilians and to scatter it and attack it when convenient. The Defense Force across the state of Tigray has been staying there with the utmost patience, firm in its stance and committed to its posture, and the Tigray people are sick and tired of bullets. They don't deserve to hear sounds of bullets any longer. And this despite the fact that the Tigray people are still sheltering the evil forces of the betrayers, but it was attacked unpredictably. <laughs> In the meantime, the defense force must be prepared to defend its garrison cap, the people and country, as per the command given from above. The time has come for this evil force to be wiped out, which has unashamedly been bragging on media about attacking Ethiopia in collaboration with any foreign destructive forces. I'd like to reiterate that we will do all it takes to destroy this traitor and urge the people of Tigray to know that the attack on the soldiers is tantamount to harm on yourselves and to defend your country, collaborating with the defense forces. The people of Ethiopia will be kept updated with the latest information by the concerned government body. Prime Minister Rabi has urged all Ethiopians to be vigilant and protect their neighbors, localities, towns and cities in collaboration with the militia, police and the defense forces in their area. In a related story, the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, under the direction of a command post, have been ordered to carry out this, their mission in the Tigray regional states. The decision was made following Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF's treacherous attack on the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, based located in Tigray region and attempted to rob the Northern Command of Artillery and Military Equipment. We have more on that. It is to be recalled that in the past few weeks, the TPLF has been arming and organizing irregular militias outside of the constitutionally mandated structure. The attack on the Northern Command has been premised on TPLF viewing the Ethiopian National Defense Force as a foreign army rather than an army that has been protecting the people of Tigray for more than 20 years. Resultantly, TPLF has chosen to wage war in Dalshah. 
While the federal government has used all means to thwart a military engagement against the CPLF, a war, however, cannot be prevented only on the goodwill and decision of one side, but on the mutual choice for peace by both parties. The last red line has been crossed with this attack, and the federal government is therefore forced into a military confrontation. <laughs> The Ethiopian National Defense Forces have been ordered to carry out their mission to save the country and the region from spiraling into instability. I call upon the Ethiopian people to remain calm, to be vigilant in the face of possible harassment, and to stand by our National Defense Force in this critical time. Over the past months of continued provocation and incitement for violence by TPLF, the federal government has maintained a policy of extreme patience and caution in order to avoid any harm. In another development, Prime Minister Rabi Ahmed has asked three top retired military officers to rejoin the National Defense Force. They are Lieutenant General Bachata Bale, Lieutenant General Johannes Gavramaskal, and Lieutenant General Ababau Tadesa. Deputy Prime Minister Demuka Mokonan says the attack by TPLF Special Force on the national defense is worse than a foreign invasion. He also says the attack by the armed forces of Tigray Liberation Front, TPLF on the Ethiopian National Defense Force, which is symbol of honor, sovereignty, and national pride, is an attempt to dismantle the country. These remarks came when Deputy Prime Minister Demuka Mokonan and uh, Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs Ridwan Hussein briefed the media about the state of emergency, access to information, secretary. secretary. <laughs> An attempted attack by Tigray Special Force on our National Defense Force is worse than foreign invasion. The attack is directed to disintegrate Ethiopia. The Ethiopian National Defense Force is a symbol of honor, sovereignty, and pride. The PLF has been using its maximum efforts to destabilize Ethiopia. It has moved its special forces to invade the Amhara region. I would like to urge the Tigray people and special force not to be instruments for the PLF. Instead, they have to stand with the National Defense Force. The conflict is not with entire TPLF structure, rather, with a group hiding itself with the Tigray people that seeks to dismantle Ethiopia. <laughs> In a related development, the State of Emergency Access to Information Secretary has called upon the people of Tigray to refrain from any activity by exposing TPLF's wrong deeds in the region. This came at a briefing on current affairs given to local and global media outlets. Abdomo Shagri has more. Local and global media outlets have been kept up to date on current issues in Ethiopia. Briefing journalists, Foreign Affairs State Minister and State of Emergency Access to Information Secretary Redwan Hussein said, the Defense Force has been provoked by militant groups that are trained by TPLF. Our defense forces in the north um, reported uh, midnight uh, last night that they received uh, unprovoked assault um, from several corners. And then they reported also there was an attempt to loot the, the artillery depots. Um, and then uh, they received an attack from several posts as, as we uh, assigned. Um, so that was um, a very unprovoked uh, attack by the Federal Defense Forces, and then the Federal Defense Forces had to uh, react um, swiftly um, to maintain law and order and to uphold the constitutional order uh, of the, the country. According to Wedwan, the federal government is undertaking various political measures to solve problems in the region. He called upon the Tigrayan people to refrain from any casualty by exposing the PLF wrong deeds. The federal government uh, made it clear that uh, it has dual obligation. One is to maintain the constitution 
and to uphold the law of the land. Responsibilities will be taken care of and then be cautious for not to have uh, more casualties. And uh, due respect and care will be taken um, to also engage the Tigray people to liberate themselves, not to be victims uh, and serve as a shield uh, for the for the small uh, colluded gang of the PLF. The current conflict does not represent the people of Tigray as a whole, rather it represents the TPLF gang groups, he added. This gang doesn't represent the entire echelon of the former TPLF, and this gang doesn't represent the grassroots and communities, and this gang doesn't represent the entire Tigrayan people. And the nature of the conflict is not between uh, Tigray versus the rest of Ethiopians, and this conflict is not between the Tigray region versus uh, the federal government. This conflict is uh, between a very small group um, which has narrow vested interest, uh, which is helping to destabilize the national order um, and to attain and regain uh, this control uh, over the Ethiopian uh, political order. The federal government had been trying its level best to avoid any conflicts in the state of Tigray, but it was to no avail, he added. However, Red One stresses the federal government is always committed to respect the civil and human rights of all the people of Tigray. So the federal government has to do uh, everything possible uh, to maintain order and to uphold uh, the constitution and again to liberate the Tigrayan people so that they can enjoy also the current political space uh, and in civil manner. This conflict could have been avoided uh, by all means and it was possible. Um, the federal government has been trying at its level best um, to have shuttle diplomacy and elders and in a group and also several individuals have tried a failed attempt uh, to assuage uh, this group to come on board and then engage in civil discourse. Uh, but all attempts were rebuffed and then um, it couldn't bear any fruit. So those fruit, uh, that, that attempt has been now thwarted by yesterday's uh, unprovoked attack on the defense forces. Um, we'll try to make sure that it could be controlled very soon. He also called up on the general public to keep updated on new information that will be disseminated by government officials. Meanwhile, the Minister of Foreign Affairs has briefed uh, the diplomatic community based in uh, Addis Ababa on the current situation of Ethiopia. The spokesperson of the ministry, Ambassador Dina Mufti, briefed the diplomatic community and resident ambassadors in Ethiopia about the current situation in the country. The briefing was accompanied by a question and answer session where the spokesperson has provided further details. In its 21st extraordinary session held yesterday on the 4th of November 2020, the Council of Ministers has decreed a state of emergency in accordance with Article 931A of the Constitution of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. The Council of Ministers has decreed the state of emergency recognizing the constitutional responsibility of the state to maintain the country's peace, the safety and se security of the citizens and to prevent acts that may lead the country to further unrest and instability. Recognizing that illegal and violent activities within the, nat the national regional state of Tigray are endangering the constitution and constitutional order, public peace and security, especially threatening the country's sovereignty, seriously impeding the federal government from discharging its constitutional responsibility in the region, violating decisions of the House of Federation, and understanding that the situation has reached a level where it cannot be prevented and controlled through the regular law enforcement mechanism. The state's emergency is decreed for a period of six months and the state of emergency task force to be led by the chief of staff of the armed forces, composed of representatives from pertinent institutions and uh, accountable to the prime minister, has been established through the state of emergency decree. The state of emergency shall be applicable throughout the national regional state of the Gray. The state of emergency task force may, through Directives expand or restrict the geographic scope of application of the decree. Detailed information regarding the state of emergency on a regular basis will be provided in due course.
The chief administrator of the Amhara state, Thomas Gundrona, has disclosed the failure of TPLF's armed attack in its northern border districts, namely Soroka and Kirkir. In his press statement on current affairs, the chief administrator called upon the general public to stand by the government while taking uncompromising measures against such attacks. Allah Tukul Mariam has the latest. Chief Administrator of the Imhara Regional State, the Meskin Taruna, has said the PLF's insurgent attack in areas of Soroka and Kirkar of the Imhara Regional State has failed by the active response of Imhara Police Force. There were failed attacks in localities named Soroka and Kirkar. Our special police force repelled it successfully and is expected to face similar attempts in different areas. This is part of the long-time plan of TPLF to create a de facto state, which can never be realistic and doesn't deserve the people of Tigray. As the Tigray people love their own country, respect the Ethiopian National Defense Force, they could not allow TPLF to do so. Plus to this, the people of Tigray and Amhara have a historic and long-standing relationship which cannot be conquered out in Zili. However, the ones ejected TPLF of its erroneous actors tried to attack the National Defense Force and penetrate to border areas of Amhara state ended with no casualties in our region. The Mexican added the Amhara regional state is cooperatively working along with the Federal Defense Force to take all the necessary measures against TPLF. Uh, our defense force has been able to save and evacuate some members of the European Defense Force who have been encircled by Tigray's special police forces. We also managed to restore some heavy artillery, which was under control of TPLF's militia, ensuring them in the battle against TPLF. We are leading the command together with the Federal Defense Force to entirely wipe out this group and punish for it is all wrongdoings. This group has been attempting various attacks as a ceaseless enemy of the Amhara people. It even uses its local manufacturing textile companies like Almeda to produce Eritrean military uniforms to disguise the attack as if by Eritrean soldiers. The chief administrator called upon the people of Amhara to stand together and cooperate with the government in such measures. <laughs> I call upon all the people of Amhara, opposition political parties and security personnel to be vigilant to protect any potential attack. They should also be cooperative enough and implement every command is cascaded by the government as of today. Of course, there is a command post for the implementation of the operation and all stakeholders have the mandate to cooperate with the command post task force. Besides, I call upon the retired members of the National Defense Force to join our campaign. Meanwhile, the chief administrator of Oromia State says attacking the defense force, which is working day and night to maintain the nation's peace and sovereignty, is destruction beyond limits. Thousands of the defense force members lost their lives in line of duty, committed to ensuring peace and security in the northern part of the country over the past 20 years until the recent violence orchestrated by TPLF. According to the chief, the attack therefore is clear indication of TPLF's obsession with instabilities and conflicts in the country. Yagar makala kaya sarawit, Yetopia gasha no, Yetopia inat abbaqi no, Yetopia andinat masarat no. The Ethiopian Defense Force is a protective shield to the nation. It's a base of unity and the honor of nations, nationalities, and peoples of Ethiopia. Antipis element is trained by TPLF has attacked the Defense Force. This incident is shameful and a black point in the nation's history. The objectives of these destructive forces are creating clashes between nations and nationalities to take back power. They are also working to bring corruption network in the country. The destructive forces have violently attacked the defense force that keeps peace and security in the state of Tigray. We are working to eliminate these anti-peace elements. The federal government has been trying to correct the mistakes of TPLF by using peaceful discussion over the past two years. But the recent attack shows it has gone beyond the lines. Mm -hmm. 
በኩልነት በነጻነት በወንድማማችነት በፍትህና በዲሞክራሲ መንገድ እንዲድ ተብሎ The way of conflict is not the right direction to the country. They have been ignoring the government call for democracy and forgiveness over the past two years. They are relentlessly working to regain power without the public recognition. This they formulated political parties as well as extremist groups to take illegal actors. They have also orchestrated various genocide across the country, ignoring the federal government efforts to solve problems in peaceful manner. Now, the PLF is forging war by attacking the defense force of the country, which is a sign of unity and sovereignty of the country. This destructive force is the enemy of the nation, and they are acting like a bandit. Other chiefs of different regional states have also denounced the incitement from TPLF and the firmer support to the federal government to maintain nation's peace and stability. This is a this news hour. The Ministry of Health has witnessed many achievements over the last three years of the Health Sector Transformation Plan. This was revealed at the 22nd Health Sector Annual Review meeting held in Addis Ababa yesterday. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization has promised to shore up the efforts of the Ethiopian health sector. Emmanuel Jorge reports. The government allocated 12% of its total budget for the health sector last Ethiopian fiscal year. By now, more than 300 hospitals are functional, with over 100 hospitals being under construction. Uh, Ethiopian Health second. Minister Dia Tadesa explains the main objective of the meeting. This annual review meeting uh, has the objective mainly to review the performance of the last Ethiopian fiscal year of 2012 as well as the last five years' performance of our health sector transformation plan as we are finishing the first five years' health sector transformation plan period. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic has become a big challenge for the health sector directly. Due to this, the whole theme of the meeting is building resilient health system for stronger public health emergency preparedness and response. The Ministry of Health also recognized individuals and organizations who have contributed to performance progress of the health sector. WHO representative to Ethiopia, Borema Sambo, says they will continue to support Ethiopia's effort in the health sector. Health, population and nutritional 
partners represent more than 25 bilateral donors, as well as several seven multilateral partners and private foundations that are committed to supporting Ethiopia achieve the goals outlined in the Health Sector Transformation Plan and Sustainable Development Goals. Coverage of community-based health insurance is expanding, which protects communities from financial hardship. In addition to this, there are many achievements in the last health sector transformation plan, the minister says. In this past five years, uh, there has been several progresses in terms of the uh, outcomes of the health sector. Uh, we're also, there is expansion of the coverage of community-based health insurance, which is another focus area going forward in terms of uh, creating a sustainable health financing system and also reducing burden of uh, out-of-pocket expenditure from our communities. So although there has been several challenges and we have not achieved all that we have set for, there has been a lot of achievements that uh, we can build upon, but also learn from the challenge and also continue in, in our next HSTP too. The event is expected to review the second health sector transformation plan and the health extension roadmap for the coming 15 years. You're watching at this news hour. And finally, the race between Donald Trump and Joe Biden has been on a knife edge with no clear winner as vote counting continued as far as this news was compiled. Results suggest a tight contest uh, in important battlegrounds, Arizona, Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. President Trump alleged fraud without offering evidence and says he launched a Supreme Court challenge even though millions of votes were still to be counted. Biden's campaign called President Trump's statement outrageous, adding the counting will not stop. Many Democratic operatives last night were dreading the coming hours because it appeared Trump was on his way to victory. Those same operatives began growing more confident primarily because of how much mail-in and absentee vote is yet to be counted. The former vice president was competitive in all the battleground states Trump carried in 2016 and had put a handful of traditional Republican states, including Georgia and Arizona, in play. The United States also was on course for its highest turnout in more than a century.
That wraps up the news in this edition. Thank you for watching us on this news hour. Goodbye and stay safe.